Hello, and welcome to the Book Winery, the show where we, or where I, <laughs> drunkenly, obviously, explain books I have read to my boyfriend who drunkenly tries to understand them. And today, we're gonna, I'm gonna be talking about Six of Crows by Leah Bardugo. Man, you got that again. What? The name, without looking at the book. Yeah, because she's one of my favorite authors. <laughs> Uh, well, then go into it. Tell tell okay. me, all right, give me, because isn't this like a trilogy, a pentology, <laughs> a sexology? It's a duology. <laughs> There's oh. two. Oh, okay. Um, so, okay, give me the general, okay. like, mm-hmm. very basic overview. Okay, basic overview. It's a crew of criminals and lost souls um, pull off a heist. Okay. That's it. That's, that's it? That's the very general, very general book. All right. Sorry. So. Thank you all for listening. <laughs> uh, like and subscribe. <laughs> hit that bell notif- Hit that bell icon to get fax- <laughs> faxes in the mail. Oh. Uh, so it's about a criminal, a group of criminals <clears throat> in... Isn't this the Russian one? Yeah, this is where it's like the world is loosely based off of like Russian culture. So a lot of the words, um, the like the language um, and like the clothing... At least in the one country that they're in, feels very Russian esque. Okay. Um. Okay. Let me look up the actual. Well, no, I don't want you to look up the actual. No, no, no. Like... I'm gonna give the actual synopsis. Okay. And then I'll go into it. But that feels like cheating. No, because this then would give people an actual idea of what the book is. Yeah, but that's so, if they want the actual idea of the book, then they can just look up the Wikipedia page. Well, and I needed a little bit of help remembering what some of the names are. It's been a little while <laughs> since I've listened to it. Um, okay. All right. Because there's so many different like components of it. Like, okay. do you want do you want the world? Do you want the characters? Do you want the plot? Because the plot kind of ties into the characters. Give me give me the five minute. Okay. Um, the five minute overview of everything. Without any spoilers. Okay. And then when you start getting into spoilers, then go, spoilers, okay. <laughs> okay. whatever. <laughs> okay. So, Ketterdam. Um, Kaz Brecker, who you probably are familiar with that name because Kaz Brecker's fantastic. Um, <laughs> so you tell me. So, he is kind of like the crime lord of Ketterdam. Incorrect. He's a gang leader. Okay. So he has his own gang, and he's... Very well known. He's... We'll get into him a little bit. So, Kaz Brecker is offered a job um, by a guy named, named um, Jan Van Eck, um, who wants him to break out a scientist from a prison. Um, the scientist is uh, Bo Yulbayer, um, and he is being kept in the prison in a prison in the center of a castle complex in Fyrda. Fyrda is... So, <laughs> <laughs> so in this world, there's magic. And then there's, um, but not every country has magic or is accepting of it. Uh, the Fjordans are not. They're kind of, um, they're, that goes into more, but yeah, whatever. So <laughs> they, <laughs> they have to, um, break, um, Yule Bayer out of the prison because he, uh, helped develop a very powerful drug called Jerda Parem. And Jerda Parem will, it takes a person's magical abilities and it just amplifies it to the like fucketh degree. <laughs> um, however, the problem is is that it's very addictive. Okay. But anyways, it's it's not well known. It's not a well known drug. So he Kaz Brecker is tasked with the job of breaking him out of prison and bringing him um, back to Vanek. Okay. Um. So in order to do that. And he's offered a paycheck of 30 million Kruger. Okay. That goes... <laughs> 30 million Kruger is, like, his chant. His, like, you know what? We're going to get paid 30 million Kruger. We just got to get through this. Uh, I'm just going to assume 30 million Kruger is, like, a lot of oh, it's money. A ton, yeah. It's a lot of currency. Okay. Um. So, he, he sets out and... Or, he gets a group of people okay. to help him. He recruits... Uh, her name is Inej, there's Nina, Jesper, Wylan, and then they also have to break another guy, Matthias, out of Hellgate Prison, um, because Nina won't help him unless they break him out. 
Nina is, she can control the human body. Okay. So, but um, she's only ever used it for, like, controlling people's emotions. Okay. Um, but so she is very, very valuable to Cass Brecker, so he kind of has to, kind of has to break them up. So, there's, um, <laughs> there's Kaz, Inej, Nina, Jesper, Wylan, and Matthias. Okay. Um, so, <clears throat> Inej is the wraith. So, she, well, Kaz is the mastermind. You know, we'll go into th- more of that. So, yeah. They have to break the scientist out of a very, very, very highly guarded castle complex. Okay. And that's the plot of the story. Okay. It's so it's just a heist movie yes, to get a guy out of... Movie? Book. Or... <laughs> it's literally just a heist book. book. Okay. So it's um, a heist book mm-hmm. um, to get a guy out of a prison. Not a prison. Out of, like, well, he's imprisoned in a castle complex. Okay. So they're trying to get a guy back. What is mm-hmm. uh, what's like the world like? Because you mentioned okay. magic. What is is so, it like fantasy? Is it medieval? Yes, is it... it's fantasy, like based off of you know Russian, um, whatever. Let me look up just so I'm not speaking out of turn. Okay. Oh shit. Okay. Um. So the word Grisha, and that's what they use for the people who have magic and who use magic. Okay. Grisha is a diminutive of the name Grigori, Grigori Rasputin. Oh. So she took, Leigh Bardugo took Rasputin's first name and turned it into a world that meant magic user. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Um, okay. So there are multiple countries. Okay. There's Ravka, Fyrda, Novia Zem, and the Wandering Isle. I don't know. So, Ravka relies on Grisha. Okay. Um, they have um, what's called the Second Army, and that's made purely up of Grisha. Okay. Um, there, you know, there's the First Army, which is his normal men, and the Second Army who are trained Grisha. Um, Fyrda, they're they're known as um, uh, Fyrdans hate Grisha <laughs> and magic. Okay. Um, and they have, we'll get them to you later, but, um, <laughs> then Novia Zem, we'll go into the, the types of Grisha and the types of magic. Okay. So, um, Corporalki is also known as the Order of the Living and the Dead. Okay. So, there is healers, heart renders, and tailors. Uh, and then there's, it's a little bit of a spoiler. Well, okay, then leave that, because again, this is just supposed to be like the five minute overview. No, 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 you taking... asked me about the world. I gave you the five minute overview. Now you're asking. Oh, me about well, then the you world. gotta clarify that. You gotta be like, okay. Oh, okay. Now we're talking about the world. <laughs> um, All right. So, just spoiler tag yeah. from here on out or here forward. Uh, this entire show was a spoiler. Well, I mean, I kind of figured. Yeah, like, but from here forward. So uh, then, real quick, no, 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 for... no, I'm not gonna spoil it completely, but I'm gonna give you a little like oomph that once you get to that point, you're gonna be like, oh shit, okay. No, I know, but let's just say for here on out, this is. At least from here before then, I assume yeah. nothing too much about the book was spoiled. No, no, no. Okay. So then for those listening that don't want anything spoiled whatsoever, yeah. w- what would be, like, your general overall... Oh, of the world? Oh, well, then no, 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 just going. your, like, rating. Oh, my rating? Yeah, just on the book overall. Oh, it's fantastic. How many kitty nubs out of ten? Kitty nubs, ten. A little toping. I would give it a solid ten out of ten. Wow! It's that good. Okay. Um, It's not for everybody... But it's really good. And I can go into more later on is this, why I think it's that good. Is this a young adult uh, book? Is this uh or what was the other one you said? New adult. New adult? I would say it's right in between. Like so, it would be it would be suitable for someone who's like sixteen. There's like a good amount of there's no like sex or anything like that, but there's a good amount of like blood gore ish. Okay. Um I'd say it's suitable for, like, anybody between 14 and 25, if not older. Okay. So, it's, I would say it's young adult to new adult. Okay. Fair enough. Alright, so then, okay. uh, spoilers from here on out? Yeah. For this, Six of Crows? I would I say, well, I'm not even to the point of No, I know, I'm spoilers. just... Okay. I'm just meaning, just in general, you you have to give a, a good hard line okay. for... Because yes. if, if in case someone's listening and they're like, oh, I, I've been thinking about reading this book, but I don't want any spoilers whatsoever, 
Okay. I'm one of those types, so I want to just kind of like have a gotcha. good uh, cutoff line. Okay. So. Which I've realized that I'm that way with books, but not with movies. With movies, I don't care, but with books, I care. Really? Yeah. I guess that makes sense. Um. Anyways, okay. continue. Okay, spoilers from here on out, even though it probably will be a little while before actually. <laughs> so, Grisha classifications, and you can kind of cut out the part... What? What? I wasn't even done. Grisha classifications? Yeah, Grisha, magic users. The classifications of Grisha, the types of magic users. I I don't know why I just immediately associated that with like, okay, here's your tax bracket that you're going into. No. So from here forward, if you're in the (laughs) $4,900 to $5,670. No, it's classifying magic. Okay. So there's the Corporalki, which is the Order of the Living and the Dead. Okay. And within that, there's healers, heart renders, tailors, and then there's a very special case of a corpse witch. Ooh. But we won't get into that. Oh. Um, that I will leave be. That was that little bit of a spoiler because there's a part in the series where something happens that if you heard me say corpse witch, you would know exactly what was going on. Um. So healers heal. Uh, heart renders they can stop people's hearts. Oh. And like. Collapse their lungs. And tailors can alter the way a person looks. Okay. So the the Corvalkai are... They can pretty much control the human body. Okay. So they can, like... Like a like a puppet? like No. Well... Because... If they have the Jirda Perem, <clears throat> they can. Oh, oh, of course. But that's the drug that I was telling you about. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So healers, of course, they can, like, heal people's wounds. Okay. And then heart renders can, you know, stop their lungs or their hearts or any part of their body that they want. Um, and then there's, there's the um, Ithrilakai. Ithrilakai? Ithrilakai. It's real Kai. It's real Kai. It's real Kai. Um, so they're the Order of Summoners. So they're, they're pretty much like um, the Avatars. Oh. So there's Squallers, Inferni, Tidemakers... Um, so squallers can deal with wind. Okay. Um, inferni, fire, tide makers, water. And then there are two special cases where there's the shadow summoner and the sun summoner. And those are in the um the book series that you would probably want to read before Six of Crows, which is Shadow and Bone. Um it's not necessary <laughs> to read it, but it definitely helps with a lot of the um kind of understanding the world yeah. and everything. That makes sense. Oh, uh, and then there's the material kai. Um, so they're pretty much like alchemists, builders, things like that. So they can they can like pull or from something. Like oh. if there was a gun pointed at you, you could pull like the copper ore out of the gun or the oh. iron ore and m- render it useless or control bullets. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> so it's kind of yeah. Okay. Materials. That's pretty um, cool. Because I was kind of wondering when you had mentioned um, at least the first, I don't know, yeah. four or five classifications of magic all seem to deal with humans. Yeah. Like, solely. I was kind of wondering, yeah, well, there was there's like, like other. There's like humans, elements, and materials, pretty much. Okay. Gotcha. Um, <clears throat> yes. And Grisha practice the it's not called magic it's called small science okay because it's kind of like the science of very specific abilities okay interesting yeah um okay so that's kind of the the world so it is a very like russian-esque at least rotka is so fjorda would be more like they're all Tall, blonde, blue-eyed, massive. They believe in, like, men are the warriors, women stay at home and are wives. Okay. They're, they're, they're soldiers. They're, they seek out the Grisha to kill them because they don't believe in magic. Okay. So, wait, are these also classifications of magic? What? The Like what you just explained, whatever that was. Is that also a type of magic? What are you explaining? The Puritans? Yeah. These are countries. Oh, okay. What if you, instead of okay. that, what if you give, like, a more of a plot? Okay, so they have a heist. Okay. Uh, to go about. So, so I will, uh, say, 
I listened to probably the first couple chapters. Mm -hmm. probably a year and a half before I finished the rest of it. Oh, really? So I don't remember how it starts. <laughs> I just remember how it continues. So we're going to just completely just not worry about that. Why was, out of curiosity, why was there such a um well separation of time? Because I started listening to that after I listened to Throne of Glass, after I finished the series, and it wasn't what Throne of Glass was. Okay. Um... And so with the audiobook, there's a different narrator for each person. And so it changes every chapter. And oh. at the time, I was really annoyed by it. But that was actually something that I found to really enjoy. Okay. Um, but anyways, so um, before I get into the plot, I want to talk about the characters. Okay. Because you like characters. Yes. Oh. And that's the main reason why I love this series so much. So, from here on out, it's going to be hard fucking spoilers. <laughs> really bad spoilers. Because I'm just going to go into depth about the characters. Like, to the point... These are things you would learn, like, at the end of the first book in the second book. These are spoilers. Spoilers. Are they spoilers? They're spoilers. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, spoilers. Thank God um, you said that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're going to start with... Should we start with the lesser characters or the better characters? The, I would say probably the the major character. Okay, like, okay, okay, think about if we'll you were start... explaining, like, A Song of Ice and Fire, you wouldn't be like, okay, the first character to talk about is Hodor. Well... <laughs> I mean, I guess. everyone likes Hodor, so that wouldn't yeah. be a bad idea. Okay, Anyways. well, then we'll start... <laughs> with Kaz Brecker. Kaz Brecker. I knew you were gonna say. Gotta that. love Kaz Brecker. So <laughs> he's the leader of um one of the most notorious gangs in Ketterdam. Okay. Uh, he's feared. He's crippled. Oh, no. He has a bum leg. Oh, no. Um, so he always has a cane with a crow's head on it because uh they are the crows. Uh, I don't know that's their gang name. I don't know. Um. He also wears gloves all the time. So everybody's always curious about, why does Kaz Brecker always wear gloves all the time? You never see him without gloves. Okay. Um, But he's not afraid to beat a bitch. <laughs> he will literally kill people. Okay. Um, So his backstory. Um, Oh, I'll tell you a little about. Do, so how would has, you do he, the like really significant backstories later? But that's part of the character, though. Okay, fine. Um, well, I'll get it to, he's snarky, he's, you know, withdrawn, okay. he's that kind of, like, he would be tall, but he's crippled, dark, and handsome. Okay. Um, he has... That's my type. That's my type. <laughs> no. Um, so he has, like, black hair, brown eyes, I'm fairly certain. Okay. Um, pale. Okay. So, his backstory is that, uh, shit, was it that his, I think his parents died when he was really young. Mm -hmm. And he lived out on a farm. Yes, they had a farm. Um, so Kaz and his older brother, um, which I should know his name because that's pre pretty significant. But him and his older brother went to Ketterdam to try and like you know make a living, make money, whatever. When they're kids, okay, because they have no family. Um, without going into too much detail because I don't really remember the detail. <laughs> um. They get kind of suckered into a really bad scheme. Okay. Where they start getting money because they're relying on this older guy. I think that was Pekka Rollins, but he went by a different name. Um, so uh, his older brother was like making good investments, putting a lot of money in. And then the guy that they were relying on was like, oh, we have this really big like sugar deal where we're going to, we, we got word that. Something was going to go wrong, so we're going to buy up all of the rest of the stuff, whatever. Um, and then that guy just disappears. Oh. Uh, so they have no money whatsoever. Um, and then his older brother gets really sick, because this is around the time when uh, there's a really bad, like, outbreak okay. of sickness that's going around. Uh, so his brother gets sick. And, you know, they're living in the alleys and he dies. Um, and then Kaz is really sick, too. Um, and the... So, they're... Because they... It's so bad that there's so many dead bodies that they can't bury them all. 
Oh. So they have, um, are they Reaper Barges or Cor- Corpse Barge? Reaper Barge? Yeah. I mean, both those names sound badass. Yeah, so, so no. It's just pretty much a barge <laughs> no. full of dead bodies. That okay. just goes out and just dumps them all into the water. God, how sick of a metal um, band name would that be? Corpse Barge? Corpse Barge! Reaper Barge. I think Reaper it's, Barge. I think it's the Reaper Barges. Um, but anyways, so the Reapers pick them up. Both of them. Okay. Um, Kaz wakes up, and he's just... Wait, um, it, it, they think that they're dead? Yeah. Oh, The brother okay. is dead. Oh, gotcha. But they think Kaz is too. So Kaz oh. wakes up, and is just surrounded, like, nearly suffocating by all these dead bodies, his brother included. Um, he manages to get off the barge, but in order to swim back to shore... He gets his brother's dead body to help, like, buoy him nice. to the shore. That's why he always wears gloves and will never touch another human being. Ah. Is because he literally had to deal with being amongst dead bodies for hours because nobody heard him screaming. Okay. Um, so that's Kaz. <laughs> he's, so okay. he's terrified of touching people and drowning. <laughs> the characters are probably 90%. Probably like 80% of why I love the Six of Crows duology so much. Um, and Kaz Brecker is one of those reasons because Lee Bardugo does such a fantastic job of realistically showing the trauma okay. that that would create. And it brings it up throughout. And that becomes a big part of his character when when he's trying to um spoiler have a romantic <laughs> connection with Inej okay um who she she's another reason why I love her character building whatever he he tries touching her without his gloves on and like has a panic attack because all he can think of is his brother's cold dead skin nice ah uh, no not nice it's but turn on though not in his case. <laughs> um, so, speaking of, Inej. Uh, Inej is the wraith. That's what they call her. She's sneaky. She's stealthy. She is very good with knives. She's all around a badass. And I love her. Um, she was kidnapped by slavers at, like, a young age. Like, I think it was, like, 12 or something like that. But she... Um, was she was part her family were kind of like travelers like a caravan or whatever um and they were performers like kind of like circus performers i guess okay uh not that but so inej was like a tightrope walker okay so she's very very skilled at things such as that but she was taken at a young age by slavers and sold to a menagerie or a whorehouse. Oh, I was um, going to say. I think it's called... <clears throat> I could be wrong. It was like House of the Exotics or something like that. Okay. Where she was known for, like, because she's tan, has black hair, kind of kind of similar to, like, Asian. I think she's in the show she's being played by an Asian girl. Okay. So kind of that. Um. So that's a rough part of her history. I mean, at uh, least what was the place called? I don't know. Yeah, the exotics? Like House of the Exotics or okay. something like I that. I mean, that's better, though, than, like, the Purple Nurple or something. <laughs> uh, no, it's worse, because, <laughs> let me tell you. So, the lady <laughs> who ran the place, I, once again, don't remember her name. That's cool. Um, she, <laughs> so when Inej first started, she was, like, a, a girl. But she was being forced to oh. have sex with men who oh. paid for it. Oh. Um, and because she was bought from slavers, she owed a debt To the woman who bought her. So she was having to work not only to pay for her debt, but also to, you know, make money for herself, whatever. Um, So she was, like, forced to have sex with men who paid for her. And um, if she cried, she would get beat. Oh, God. Where there were girls who, if they couldn't not cry, they would just disappear. Oh. Um... So she would learn to kind of, you know, shut her brain down. A trigger warning for that. Um, <laughs> ah, a little late there. Yeah. But, yeah, so that's 
that's another thing that she does really well in the character development is that you really feel for her but okay. like you can tell that she's trying to cope but that's such a weird hard thing to cope with i guess uh but anyways um kaz stumble upon her one day stumble upon her stumbles Stum- upon her stum- yeah uh one day um because he has business with the lady who owns her um and um he ends up buying her okay to come work for him um well it's not him it's like his higher up okay buys her because she's so quick it's all because their first meeting is she like sneaks up on him Ah. but he's like no one ever sneaks up on me Hmm. like that doesn't happen so you must be really good so i want you in my crew you're gonna start robbing shit for me. <laughs> um, so of course she's more than happy to get on that. But uh, the thing that I like about her is, is, is still that's still a thing that comes up throughout. That's the thing that I find best about character trauma is when it continues to come up. Okay. Because that's realistic. It doesn't just go away. Speaking of character trauma. <laughs> <laughs> um, like for instance. How I told you that uh, Kaz's trauma was getting in the way of their romantic connection or whatever. It got in the way for her, too, because um, she was, like, sitting on a sink and he was helping her, like, bandage up some wounds. And, you know, things were getting a little steamy. But she couldn't help but think of her days in the menagerie. And he couldn't help think of, but of, think of things from his dead brother. Gotcha. Um, And, two, there was, once again, spoiler. I, I think we're a long uh, past spoiler <laughs> warning. Just go um, for it. So there's at one point, I think in the second book, where, yeah, second book, where she is, like, trying to destroy these, uh, like, sugar, um, what are they called? Like, mill, not mills, they're those big, like, things that store, like, grains and shit. Oh, like a grain silo? Silo. Yeah. So it's a silo full of sugar, and she's trying to destroy them. And but why? That's yummy, yummy sugars that you could because make they're cakes trying out of. to destroy Vanek. Um, it's true. Vanek. What did he do to them? Ah. Uh, How dare they assume? He kidnapped Inej and tortured her. Ah, uh, well, you know, I yeah. mean, that's um. Can't she, they just call the police? Well, that's the second book. Oh. <laughs> Six of Crows Part 2, they call the cops. No, 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 not calling the cops, but <laughs> him kidnapping Inej. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, let's, just, let's just stick on the first book for now, then. But a lot of the character development happens in the second book. But, but yeah, I'm going to try. Yeah. I'm going to try and stick to the first book. Okay. Um, But, like, for that moment that did happen in the second book that I like about her character development or whatever is that... The smell of the burning sugar reminded her of, like, a client that she had. Oh, okay. But the reason why that was so traumatizing for her was because he knew who she was oh. from before she worked there. Like, while she worked at, like, the on the tightrope and all of that. And so she wasn't able to distance herself from gotcha. that situation. Um, because he, like, kept mentioning like her family and shit. Ah. Um so that's Inej. <laughs> um Inej is fantastic. And then there is Wylan. Okay. Mylan Vanek. He is the son of Vanek, the bad guy. Oh, okay. Or the guy that they were working for or whatever. Gotcha. Um Kaz knew this right away, nobody else did, but he ran away. Um, because his dad's a dick, to put it bluntly. Well, it um, sounds like it. But, so Wylan, uh reminds me a lot of you. He's their oh. demolitions expert. <laughs> so he does, he does explosions. And he can't read. Well, you know what? Spoilers. Sp- uh, <laughs> Spoilers he, for me. And that's why his dad kind of kick, didn't kick him out, but was like, yeah, you're a disgrace. And tried killing him. <laughs> um, <laughs> um trigger so, warning much <laughs> but no uh, i figure um the way they made it sound was like that he was probably very heavily dyslexic but gotcha. they didn't really know how to handle it 
Oh. Wyland's a cute redhead. Freckles and all that. Um, and he has... Well, I guess that's the end of the first book. Forget it. You know, we'll just leave it there. That's Wyland. Um, <laughs> that, that's Wyland. He likes yeah. blown up shit and can't but, read. But he... Well, he ran away. So he's not used to, like, the criminal life. Okay. He's used to the rich life. Gotcha. Um, so it's, like, an experience for him. Um, and... He also has some um, sexual tension with Jasper. Okay. So we go on to Jasper. Okay. Jasper is like the guns are rolling, dude. Jasper is kind of like the he's the guns. He's the the like the sniper. The like he he can shoot people. <laughs> no, so he came from a farm. Um, he has a very bad gambling problem. Oh, okay. Very bad. Oof. Uh, lost it. Uh, almost lost his father's farm in the process. Gotcha. By gambling problem. Once again, one of the reasons why I love her character building, um, is because that comes up very frequently when like they have a big success or a big fail. His immediate reaction is like, I need to go gamble. I need to go to a gambling uh. hall, get a couple drinks. I need to make this better. Um, and it shows him working through that and trying to get better about it and like trying to uh. You know, that. Um, so that's Jasper. Okay. Um, then we go to Nina. Nina is our curvilicious heart render. Uh-huh. Uh, is she a heart render or is she a tailor? I don't know. Um, she's fantastic. Okay. Uh, she worked at a menagerie just like Inej. However, she didn't, like, you know, have sex with people. She just helped make them feel good emotions that was her job she could control people's emotions oh Um, man that would be pretty handy to have yeah she's she's missing out on the on the big times instead of a menagerie she needs to be like a therapist or something (laughs) like people just sit on a chair pretty much the same thing oh well there you go yeah um so she um so her backstory ties in very heavily with matthias oh uh and matthias is a um Fearden soldier. Okay. So he hates Grisha and um Nina is a Grisha. <laughs> so okay. They, they hate each other. Oh, okay. Um but of course that never lasts long. Um How great would that be in a book to just have like two characters that hate each other and that just never changes? Fuck. <laughs> Just reverse character. No, no, no. They just See, start my, hating each other my, more. <laughs> my biggest, my biggest romantic trope is the romance that starts because they hate each other. That's right. You that's, mentioned that. That's my absolute favorite, which is why I love Nina and Matthias. That's right. Um. So they, Nina was part of the second army for Ravka. Okay. Uh, Ravka, 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 Ravka. Ravka. Um, and she got captured by some Fjordans, Fjordan slavers. Okay. Um. As you do. As you, yes. you know, as it normally happens. Um, I mean, it was her fault. <laughs> but one of those slavers was Matthias. Ah. Uh, the ship they were on wrecked. <clears throat> and so they landed on the coast of Fjorda. Um, I think it was Fjorda. Maybe not Fjorda. But they landed on a coast, um, and it was just the two of them. And so, and uh, Nina saved Matthias while the ship wrecked or whatever. So it becomes a tumultuous relationship where they hate each other. But of course, you know, they end up falling in love, whatever. Um, Nina really likes food. She likes food. Um, <laughs> Is she the only one that likes food? She's like all the other characters. All the other characters don't eat food. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then, she, yeah, because she ends up. Okay, I'm getting way too into the character. Yeah, there's just okay. a little bit, okay. just a so, wee bit, but that's okay. Matthias is a Fjordan soldier, so he's massive, blonde, blue-eyed, so, stony-faced. So he's a he's Hitler's perfect child. <laughs> he's a beautiful Aryan. Race person, oh. pretty much. Okay, so once again, I don't really is Hitler in this book. 
No. I mean, I assume if there's Russians. Stop. We're trying to make this enjoyable for fine. people to listen to. Fine. <gasps> um. I guess. <laughs> um. I don't know. I might need another drink here soon. Oh man. Um. So okay. So is that all the characters are like the main characters? Yes. Is Hodor in this book? No. Damn it. it. Well, I'm not interested. Zero. All right. Kitty well, nubs out of ten. <laughs> um. Okay. <sighs> Fuck. It's been a long time since I've listened to it. Um. So they go to break out the scientist. So wait. Okay. So. <laughs> they want they want the scientist yes. because he makes a drug. Jurdaparem. Okay, yeah, that. Um, so he makes a. Dr- why do they, they the, want him? I assume so he can make more drugs. No, no, no. So they're just pretty much capturing him for the person who hired them. Which yeah. Which is Vanek. Yeah. Which is Wyland's dad. Yeah. Uh, but Wyland's dad does not know that he is part of that group. <laughs> um. Oh, okay. But like, why do they want the guy? So they can s- give him. To the guy, because that guy wants to make him make more drugs. Uh, okay, yeah. Yes. So what I was saying. Because. because <laughs> so yeah. he, he can make yes. more drugs. Because yeah. Druda Prem makes the the magic so much stronger. Okay. So his his hope is to kind of. Because there's just a normal street drug called Druda. That's just a normal street drug. It kind of just keeps people awake. It's pretty much just a very low-key cocaine. Um, but then <laughs> low-key cocaine. It, yes. But then the scientists. Um, turned it into Jurda Perem, which is okay. the really bad one. Um, okay. so he wants to be able to control everything. I, I was just confused on the yeah. motive gotcha. as to what they were doing. Cause I mean, I assume none of, I assume all of them think that they're getting him to make more drugs. Yes. Okay. And that's why they're getting him. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. Anywho. So anyway, sorry, I interrupted you. They, so they go on their heist. They're going on their heist. They're driving. And they're uh like 19, going by boat. They're in their nineteen ninety three VW golf and they're driving to the site, um and a tire blows out. What because movie there's is a, that from? I don't know. I'm just oh. this is totally just being made up on the spot to my knowledge. Maybe it's um, in a movie, who knows? Okay, jeez. I <laughs> Jesus the Bowiza. I can remember more the second book than I can the first book. Uh so I'm gonna do my best here. Okay. Um so they get to the establishment that they need to break into. Okay. And uh, so there's a things p- happen yeah, and the book so, closes. Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, um. So there's like a party event thing going on. Okay. God, I don't actually know if I can explain this book that well. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Um, okay, no, no, no. I'll just give you a very rough. That's uh, fine. Yeah, go for rough. So. Do it rough. They find the scientist. Okay. The scientist is dead. Yes, I knew it. In place, it's the scientist's son. Oh, well, of course. So they take the scientist's son. So why? Um. Okay. So they're able to escape. Uh, and. So they're able to escape, and they go to the meetup place where they're going to switch them out. However, oh, shit, to get out, they literally steal a tank. Nice. Yeah. Um, okay. And then as well, Nina, the heart render, has to take Jurda Perem, which okay. is highly addictive. That's another reason why I like her characters, is because she has to deal with drug addiction, and she does it very well. Nice. Um, she has to take Jurda Perem to kill, like, or to stop the heart. The hearts dock unconscious a shit ton of soldiers <clears throat> so that they can get past. Okay. Um, while she's under the um, effects of Jurda Perem, she also takes Wylan, who's the son of the guy they're meeting, and turns him to look like the scientist's son. So they're pretty much trading him over to his dad. Okay. But of course, they like to do a swappity swoop. Swappity uh, swoop. Whatever happens at the end, and Inej gets taken. Okay. By a dude with wings. Oh. And then the book ends and the second book begins. Oh, wow. So, okay, so real quick, <laughs> why did... <clears throat> okay, so I assume the scientist is being held by, like... By the Fyrdens, this... who who hate magic users. Okay, gotcha. But um, he's able to create a drug that it's, like... So with that drug, the Fyrdens are... Um, they're able to control 
those who are Grisha. Okay. Because it's so addictive that those Grisha will do anything to make yeah. sure they still have that drug. So they could be like, yeah, go kill these other people. And they'll do it because they're, for one, hopped up. And for two, they know they need more. Okay. So. <clears throat> so, okay, anyway. That's why they need the drug. Yes, gotcha. Right. So they have him. Why would they also abduct his son? Um, or was the son born in prison? No, no, no. They oh. just, um, because the son knew what the father was doing. So okay. the son, you'll buy her his son. So he's like a lab assistant. Yeah, pretty okay. much. All right, fair enough. That, that's fine. There was some other reason, but I don't fucking know. That's okay. I was just kind of poking holes a little bit. That's okay. I'm trying to remember. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Because I really don't feel, from what I remember, like, yeah, things happen, but it's more, <laughs> it really is genuinely, it feels very character driven. Oh, that's fine. Um, so it's. Yeah, things happen, but that's, you don't need that. Nah. <laughs> um, no, but okay, so it's a character driven book rather than a, it, like, plot, we have to get the ring back to Mordor it's driven book. Both. It's, okay, that's fine. I feel like. We're like well, you know, and I'm not saying know. one is better yeah. than the other. I'm just saying that they're yeah. different. But it feels like you don't... At least for me, I didn't really think much about what was happening. Just more of how the characters were reacting. Okay. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. But, so yeah. Um. So how, how long was the book compared to most books? It was a fair... It was a fair book? It was a it normal was... book, I'd say. I think it's like... I know that's kind of a silly question to ask, but... No, 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 that's fine. It's a normal... It's a normal book. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, how is the word... The letter spacing between letters? I don't know. I'd listen to it. Whatever that's called. It. Oh, you listened to it. Listen to it. Listen to, 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 to it. Spacing? Spacing. There's, there literally is a specific word for that. And every time I, I do I... this, I... I'm trying to remember that word, but I can't. The universe doesn't want you to be a piece of shit. I guess. Um, well, then how was the narrator? Oh. Uh, how was the audiobook? The audiobook was fantastic. Um, because each character, like, they swap between the chapters so that each char- each chapter was from, like, a different character's kind of point of view or perspective. Okay. It was all in third character. Gotcha. Third person. Um, but so each character had their own narrator, and I know that's a big problem with a lot of people because each narrator does each character a little bit differently. Okay. But I enjoyed it because it gave you the feeling of each, you know, character. Okay. So, like, Kaz Brecker's narrator was a guy with, like, a really, like, ravelly voice because he was said to sound like he smoked a pack a day. Or like, no, it was, like, that his voice sounded like gravel and rocks okay so he is a very like and they found a narrator who sounded a lot like him so sure inej didn't sound quite right but his voice did okay um that makes sense yeah i would say i wasn't a fan of jasper's narrator okay um i was however a massive fan of nina and inej's nina was also the one who did the narrator who did a neat at whoa the narrator who did Nina um, is the narrator who does the Throne of Glass books, and those are, like, my favorite books ever. Um, yeah, so the narrator, the narrating was top-notch. Okay, awesome. It got a little worse in the second book, I think, because they added in Wyland, um, and I hated the narrator for Wyland. <laughs> okay. It was just bad. Isn't that amazing how easily that can ruin an audiobook? Yes. Just the little narrator. Like, I... When I ran into that with the third uh, Duncan Egg yeah. book or whatever, the which you didn't even you didn't even make it to that audiobook. I didn't even make it through the first one. Oh, God, I'm so disappointed in that. Those were so good. I know. Welcome to the Book Winery episode three, where Terry talks about the Duncan Egg trilogy. <laughs> where Terry whines about Rachel's choices of books. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I um, like how we call it the Book Winery, and yet I'm drinking a rum and coke. Well, you could be drinking wine. I don't want to drink wine. Today on the Rum and Coke Winery. <laughs> the book rummy. The book rummy. Book rummy. 
Um, There's another question I was just going to ask, though. I don't remember what I was going to I ask. need to get... I need to, like... We need to do this, like, right after I've read or listened to a book. Yeah, because we did that on the, the trial episode, and it yeah. was, like... Yeah. Ideas instantly. But yeah. that's okay. That's okay. Uh, I just have seven hours left on my other one. Oh! <laughs> That'll nothing. be that'll that's be like fine. two work days. Yeah, that's nothing. So is that a cat? That's not a cat, that's a shark. Um God, there was something else I was gonna ask. Oh, okay, so as far as the setting, something that I still don't understand. Because oh, yeah. you mentioned um it's in Russia, they have guns, they have not, tanks. Not in Russia. No, 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 no. Okay. It's just based on Russian. Loosely based. Lo- but that's just Ravka. That's just the one place. Because there's another place oh. that's kind of loosely based off of Asian culture. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I was just a little bit confused on, like, the time. It's... I, I assume this is an entirely different yes. world. It, okay. Yeah. Right, it's an fine. entirely different. It's not earthen at all. Earthen? Nope. That's it's fine. just she uses the russian culture to base her like language and culture off of okay that makes sense yeah um so then give me the over give me the the rating then um well even though you already kind of went into this give me the rating then on like characters, characters? how many kitty tobins out of 10 kitty tobins would you rate the character tobins um i would give it like a nine and a half ten dang like i very much they're the type of characters where you want to be friends with them okay like it makes you sad to be done with the books because you have no more of those characters okay fair enough um what would you give like the story plot i know i know there's a a firm distinction between those two words but i don't know what it is i'll give it like a seven or eight okay maybe an eight yeah we'll give it an eight just kind of the overall flow of yeah, it went, the book. It was good. And they definitely had their, like, twists and turns and, like, <clears throat> we don't know if we're going to do this. Um, I will say, well, you know, I don't know how I feel about it. So, Cass Brecker, of course, is, like, a mastermind. Okay. Yeah. So, that's good and all. But I feel like every bad thing that happens, it always comes up that he's like, I had a plan for that. Oh, I, I had gotcha. planned for that. Like, I know what we're doing. I already knew that we this was gonna happen. Yeah. Um. So I'll duck a little bit of point. It it works well, but it it still is just kind of like oh, okay. Yeah. But that's probably one of my biggest problems. Like I oh I love a good like heist movie mm-hmm. or heist like show or story or something like that. But that's always one of my biggest things. Is there always has to be those like hiccups with yeah. air quotation marks there always has to be those like hiccups or those problems that happen mm-hmm. but of course it can never just be like the pro the the characters dealing with said problem but see, in the moment it always has to be like oh i thought about this 47 days ago when i was writing up this plan because i knew there the cups well, were going to be colored pink so obviously well and i will <laughs> say it wasn't like that bad yeah it was just a little you know that's fine. Um, but the end of the book definitely was kind of one of those. The second book is pretty much Kaz not having planned properly in the first book. Oh. <laughs> so, okay. Well, no, actually, that's wrong. Shit goes wrong at the end of the first book because he likes an edge. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense, that's actually. So when shit goes wrong, he knows what's happening and he knows what's going down, but. He goes to look at Inej to make sure she's okay, and that kind of just throws everything off because gotcha. they're in the middle of like a fight, whatever. Okay. So yeah. Um, I'm trying to think what else there is. What was the tone of the book? The tonal. Like it was like it was. I I, I don't know. I no actually that's a legitimate question. Yeah. What was like the tone like? Was it more the dark? Tone, was it more it was, whimsical? It was, it was like a very dark heather gray. It wasn't like black. What's a Heather Gray. Heather Gray, like, very dark gray. Wait, you mean, like, a legitimate color? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, like, it wasn't quite, So a like, dark gray. Yeah, like, it wasn't, like... <laughs> it wasn't, like, a really dark book, but it definitely had some darker feelings and themes. Okay. And whatnot. Um, but it also was very comical. Okay. Um, not <clears throat> comical, but, like, Jasper and... Nina and Wylan were definitely comic reliefs a little bit. No, maybe not so much Wylan, but Jasper and Nina, definitely. Okay. That makes um, sense, I guess. It was a good... It was a good... 
good, uh, you know, it's a good feel. Good, good, good shit? Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, then give me, like, uh, what were your least favorite things about the book? Oh, geez, my least favorite thing? Yeah, if you, if you could um, ramble off, like, two or three things was, that you didn't like. It was a little confusing in terms of the names. Gotcha. Um... Not for the main characters, but for, like, there's, like, Pekka Rollins, and then there was someone else. Maybe it was because I listened to it over the course of a couple days that oh. it kind of got a little confusing, and I was working while I was listening to it. <laughs> so I wasn't fully listening to it, but that honestly would, honestly would be probably one of my only nitpicks about it. That makes sense. Which, I mean, I think we've talked about that before, that we both have issues with that, because, yeah. like, I... Oh, God. Going through, like, Song of Ice and Fire books, like, every single character just, yeah, mm-hmm. over the top of my head. I don't remember names at all. Yeah. Um, but. But no, because I think it, yeah, because even, like, the timing in which she explained backstories mm-hmm. was done really well. Okay. Um, Maybe if she had done, like, two chapters, like, a Kate, like, occasionally not switched to a different character every chapter oh okay um yeah yeah but then again <clears throat> it worked fine it was fine okay. so there weren't really too many nitpicks about it but i was gonna say is there anything else that you didn't like or that weren't appeal standards i don't think so no right, that's no, fine. it was it was good all right well then uh, that leads me to the next topic. Then what was some of your favorite stuff? Which I already know one of the favorites is probably going to be the characters. Yes, the characters. <laughs> uh, just hands down. I know I say that a lot. But she... Because that's one of my biggest pet peeves about books is when a character has trauma and that's supposed to help build the character. It's supposed to give the character, like, structure, finality, or whatever. But, like, it never carries through. It's just introduced. Is like, oh, yeah, this character has a really bad addiction. But that's never going to come up again. <laughs> A.K.A. Reed in Criminal Minds. Um, <laughs> oh, he was addicted to heroin and then yeah. LSD style drugs. Ah, never mind, he's fine. Yeah. But um, <laughs> she does really well in, she deals with um, like childhood trauma, um, uh, addiction, gambling problems. Oh, man. Um, like drug addiction, um, sexual trauma. She deals with all of that in a way that doesn't, hurt you to read okay but you can relate to the characters and feel for them okay and you can appreciate the struggles they went through because it makes them the character they are gotcha yeah. that makes sense what else did you like about the book or what else were your like favorite standout things from the book that you liked i don't know i i just like a good heist book. <laughs> i i love a good heist i don't know yeah fair that enough was, that was good shit to me all right well um <clears throat> if there isn't anything else to say, then would you? Is it time for a final rating? Sure. I already know what you're gonna give it because you already gave like an overall rating yeah. in the first Just first a, bid. It's a ten out of ten <laughs> to me. Maybe a nine, nine and a half. How many kitty toe beans is it? Nine and a half toe beans. Okay. Uh, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so, um. What so do that, we, <laughs> Are you ever going to tell tell me about the second book? You've got me sitting on the edge of the couch. Yeah, I'll tell you about the second book. Okay, we'll do that another time. Yeah. But, um... So, uh, that was a very poor, uh, <laughs> description of, uh, Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo. Okay. And, uh, we have nothing else. All right. Thank you all for listening. Like and subscribe. Hit that bell notification to get faxed pigeons to your inbox. Don't forget to like us on LinkedIn and and FaceTime us the pictures of your teeth. Your teeth? Why teeth? I don't know. Cat teeth. Give us pictures of your (gasps) cat's teeth. Kitty teethers. Yes. (laughs) God. Uh, Okay, we have to have a really, like snappy goodbye we don't well like my favorite murder <laughs> their thing is they just in sync go goodbye that's just their thing all right three we can't do two. that because that's them bye-bye no that's their thing all right and they're um, not morons three two we adios can't talk about this um see you la- later alligator three
Two. I don't know. See you later, alligator. Three. No, 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 no. Let's not do it. Not so. <laughs> Let's just say goodbye. 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 And thank you, Hannah, for listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.